So I want to continue our discussions of Git. And today what I want to do is I want to focus on how we name things in Git and how to move around between different snapshots. So I'm going to take you through a number of commands, but I think predominantly we're going to focus on branching and tagging today. And to do that, I'm going to use a GitHub repo that I have here. So this is our telescope project. The telescope project is where all of our blogs are being aggregated. And uh, if you're not following along with telescope right now, there's just some fantastic blogs going up. People are talking about, you know, recapping their thoughts for the week, which is great. People are talking about the tools that they're building. So you're getting a mix of reflections, technical details, um, people announcing releases. And this is really what uh, blogging is all about. Blogging is about building a community of uh, knowledge. So as you're working with people, you want to tell them, here's what I'm learning. Here's what I'm finding difficult. Here's what I'm finding interesting. Here's what I just did. Here's this cool thing that I created and I want to show you. And you'll be surprised. You think, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm writing a blog. Who's going to read my blog? It's interesting. People find your blog and you aren't necessarily expecting it. And you're not necessarily expecting, you know, where they'll be or who they'll be. So blogging lets you reach a global audience. It doesn't mean that you're going to go viral and, you know, your blog is going to be read by millions of people. Sometimes that happens, but that's not necessarily the goal. The goal is for you to be able to really crystallize the work that you're doing in into a form that, you know, you can put out there, people can read and that you can go back to and search and look for later. Anyway, so the telescope system is a, it's an open source project and it was created by students in this course. Um, you can see the contributors here, 64 contributors. So, you know, you're using a piece of software written by other students like you who are learning to do open source work. Anyway, I'm gonna use it today. I could use any repository, but it's a good one for us to, uh, to work with, for me to show you some of the things that I that I wanted to uh, I wanted to talk about. So, I I want to talk about something that it, that builds on what we talked about last time. So last time we were talking about the fact that Git keeps track of snapshots of all of the files in our project, and it it does so using these uh, hashes. So it, it hashes every file and stores those, those files as what it calls blobs. And it stores all of those um, hashes for all the different file blobs into a tree, a tree of you know, directories and files. And it keeps track of like the fact that there's a whole bunch of these things that go together. And then it also layers on top of that metadata about who, who did a particular piece of work, when did they do that work? What were they doing? Um, you know, what's the log message for what they did? So all that metadata about the commit goes in there too. And so we have this concept of, of a commit and a commit is some number that looks like this. And when you're, when you're sitting in GitHub or when you're in Git, you'll often see like if, for example, um, if, if, if we were to go and look um, at one of the screens that you would see in, in GitHub and say, okay, what's the latest commit that's sitting on, um, you know, for this repository, you can see that it will list the commit. It'll say, okay, you are currently looking at this commit right here and it's a hash. And it will also show you other has other hashes. So for example, you can see right here, it shows me two hashes. So it says these, there are two parents to this commit. So we need to talk about this when we get into talking about branching and so on. But I want you to notice how only the first few characters, six or eight characters of a hash are usually necessary. So Git, if I click on this commit right here, for example, you'll see that this is the full hash for this commit. And it actually has all of the, of the characters, but what Git and GitHub often do is they shorten them down. They shorten them down because you really, you know, for uniqueness, um, this is unique enough uh, for the number of commits that are going to be in in this repository. So this is often enough. This this lets us um, lets us do what we wanted to do. Okay, so 
Um, so let's talk about this for a second. So you can see here that I'm sitting on the same commit that is in GitHub right now. And when I say that I'm on a commit, what that means is that the files that are in my working directory, my working tree, they are the same files as are in the snapshot that was created in that commit. So the, you know, someone makes a, makes a version of the code, they do a snapshot, they commit that snapshot, it goes into the .git directory. And if I am, if I am on that commit, it means that Git has copied that snapshot out of the .git directory and it has put it into two places. Number one, it has put it into the staging area. So we talked about the staging area being this invisible, this invisible sort of work table where you are assembling uh, the next snapshot that you're gonna commit into Git. And then it also copies it into my working tree and the working tree is like this rough draft where I can, I can make modifications to those files. So in my directory right now, we talked about if I say git status, git will tell me, uh, here's what's happening in your current directory. It knows this because it compares what I have in my working tree to what I have in my staging area. Okay, so another term that we will use and you'll see come up a lot is you'll see this term head. So you can see when I look at this commit, it says that my head is currently pointing to master. And you can see there's also a number of other what are called branch, uh, remote branches here. So um, let's talk about what this means. So right now, I my head is where I am where I am pointing. I am pointing to a particular snapshot. We have to think about Git as think about Git as a series of snapshots. It's just a whole bunch of different versions of this code, and they're all saved inside of the .git directory. I can I can add more. I can go back in time and I can get uh, previous ones that were there. So this system that Git has of naming things with hashes is, it's really good for Git. Like Git has this perfectly unique identifier that can't be ambiguous in any way. So it's impossible for two files or two commits to ever share the same hash unless the contents are 100% identical down to the byte level. So this is perfect for doing data integrity. But as a developer, I don't want to have to use these names. Like, I don't want to say to my friend, yeah, I'm sitting on F0606E8F and read off this huge long string. It's not realistic for a human to use these names. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Git gives us a couple of tools that we can use in order to deal with the complexities of these hashes. We can't get rid of the hashes. The hashes are fundamentally built into uh, what Git is and how it works. But for us, when we're trying to we're trying to work on this stuff, we have a couple of tools that are available to us. Okay, so the first tool that we have is we have something called tags. So if I say uh, git tag, in this repository, it prints out a list of all of my tags. Okay, so what is a tag? Well, let me take you back to the GitHub page over here. So on this GitHub page, you'll see that there are a number of releases. Over on the right-hand side here, it says there are 10 releases of this project. The most recent release of this project is version 1.2.0, and that was on August 2nd. So if I click on releases, it gives me a list of all of these releases like this. And you'll see up here, it also has a list of all of the tags. So it has releases and tags. So notice something here. I want you to notice that the 1.2.0 commit is actually, sorry, the 1.2.0 tag is actually this commit 3D978A72. And if I scroll down, you can see that the, the 1.1.0 release was D9D86CA, etc. So these tags if I click on this, you can see them a little bit easier. We have a name, which is a version of the software. And then we also have a commit. So if you think about a software project as this 
ever-evolving piece of code. And so every day people come into work, or if you're volunteering, people are working away at this code, they're fixing bugs, they're adding features, they're removing old code, they're updating dependencies. And every time they do that, they take a snapshot of the code and another snapshot of the code, and they keep doing this and they keep piling up inside .git. Every once in a while, the community is going to get together and say, you know what, we've, uh, we've done a really good job over the last month and we want to ship the current version of our code out to our users. So we want to um, package that up and we want to release this code. So what they'll do is they'll tag, they'll, they'll make a tag and they'll say that the code at this particular snapshot. So if I click on one of these, you can see here that um, this, this release is just a regular commit. It, it's a commit like any other commit where this is the way the files looked at that moment. But what we do is we give this, we give this a name, 1.2.0. So you can see that I have all of these different releases of my code that go back in time. So what's nice about a tag is that I can essentially, um, I can take a commit and like if we, um, you know, I can take one of these commits that's here and um, instead of having to remember what the particular commit was that we released, I can just go by tag name because nobody's going to remember all of these all of these names. But if I but if I um, if I have the name of a tag, it's really easy. Git tag shows me. Okay, here's all the lists of of these tags. How do I make a tag? Okay, so what you would do if you wanted to make a tag is you would say git tag dash a, and then you would give some kind of a name for this. So let's say I was going to release version 1.2.1. So I might say 1.2.1 is going to be the name of my tag. And I'm going to put in a message just like I would if I was doing a commit. And I'm going to say, um, Here's the information about this particular release. And so now if I do git tag, I have a new tag that's available 1.2.1. And that's all it is. It's, it is a, um, it's a, whoops. It is now this tag, which is associated with a particular commit like so. Okay, so we have a way going forward in time. If I ever need to refer back to this particular commit, I can do that. I can do that by the tag name or I can do it by the commit SHA. Both of those things get me back to the same place, but I've made it easier for myself to be able to say I want to, uh, I, you know, I want to be able to look at the code as it looked at a particular time. Okay, so why is this helpful? So let's say we release our software and people are using our software, but our developers continue to work. So we released our software a couple of months ago and people are using version 1.1 right here, let's say. And we are still working forward. We're working on version 1.2.2, but our users are still using this older version that um, was called 1.1.0. And somebody reports a bug and we want to see what was going on in the code at that time. So what I can do, if I want to go back to a particular time in the past, I can say git checkout and I could say 1.1.0 like that. So if I wanted to, I can give a, I can give a tag name like this. And if I press enter, it says it is switching to 1.1.0, and it gives me a warning, which I'm going to talk about in a, in a minute. So um, for the moment, ignore this, but we'll come back to it. So it says your, so this last line down here is important. It says your head is now pointing to D9D86CA. So let's go back here for a second. If I go back to my tags, and I look at the 1.1.0, you can see that 1.1.0 is D9D86CA. So it says, essentially, 
I have gone back into the archives in Git. I've looked for the tag 1.1.0, which refers to this commit. And I've gone and I have found the snapshot and I have pulled that snapshot out of storage and I've put it into your working directory. So the way that my files look in here now is the exact way that they looked back when we did the release. So I've gone back in time. And if I do a git log, you'll see that I'm now sitting, my head is sitting on D9, D86 CA. And this is a commit from Monday, April 27th, when we did the release of 1.1.0. You can, this is the top of my history. So you notice that all of the other things that we've done like up till yesterday aren't here. So what you're looking at is you're looking at that code backwards. So you're seeing this is the latest commit. This is the one before it, the one before it, the one before it, etc. all the way down. Okay. So if I wanted to um, go back to the 1.2.1 the tag, I could do that too. I could say git checkout. 1.2.1, like this. So it says your previous head position was this. So in, a moment ago, that's where I was. Your new head position is now at this. I'm now pointing to F060, etc. So if I do a git log, you can see that I'm now, my head is pointing to this commit, which also happens to be this tag. So we're gonna refer to things by commit SHAs, and we're also going to refer to things um, using their name. Uh, both ways would work. Let's, let's try another experiment. So we said that this commit here is the commit for version 1.1.0. I'm going to copy this commit. And I'm going to say git checkout. And instead of saying 1.1.0, uh, which I did a minute ago, this time I'm going to say git checkout and I'm going to give it a commit SHA like this. So I do that. And it says you are now sitting at this position here. So if I do git log, you can see that I'm back to 1.1.0 from Monday, April 27th. And here's the... Uh, Here's the SHA. So what's interesting about that is I can, I can either use the git hash like this, or I could use 1.1.0 because both things refer to the same snapshot. They both refer to the same, uh, the same code. Uh, let's do, let's go back, git checkout uh, 1.2.1. So now I'm back to the most recent thing. And let's do one more experiment. What if instead of using the entire hash, what if I just grab the first, you know, eight or so characters? So if I go here and I say git checkout and I paste in just the front little bit of the commit SHA. No problem, that works perfectly too. So it says you were previously at this position you are now at this position, you're now on this snapshot, and sure enough, that's where I am. I'm sitting on this SHA, which is also known as 1.1.0, that's the tag name. And you'll see that that's where my, my head is pointing. So that's where I am currently working, that's what is in my working tree, that's what's in my staging area. All right, so, when we talk about tags, tags are really useful for being able to name a commit and they're, they're useful for being able to name a commit that is going to be a historical thing. So places where people use this, they use, people use tags when they want to refer to a version of the software that existed at some point in time. This is what our software looked like when we shipped the 0.8 version, the 0.9 version, the 1.0 version, etc. And so you'll see lots of projects using tags this way. Now the thing about a tag is that a tag will never move. So if you think about it, if I say git checkout um, 1.0.0, The 1.0.0 tag 
is always going to refer to the code that looked like what it looked like on Friday, April 17th, when we shipped this version of the code. This will always be the commit SHA of the code when it looked that way. So when you think about a tag, a tag is a name for a commit. And once you name this commit, it will never move. 1.0.0 is this, the, the two are the same thing and they will always be the same thing, okay? So let's talk about, let's talk about something different. I want to, I want to talk to you about the second and arguably the more important way that we name things in Git and that is using branches. Okay, so let me go back to what my repository looked like a minute ago. I'm going to say git checkout master. Okay, so a tag refers to a git hash, a git SHA, and it's a way of saying, here's an easier to remember name for this thing. But the problem we have with this is that it is fixed in time. It will never move. But if you think about the way that we do development, so let's say that I am going to start working on a new feature. I'm going to I'm going to add a new feature to this software. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to sort of head off in a direction and start adding new bits of code until I get to my uh, my end goal. I start on a Monday and I don't finish until the following Friday. It takes me 2 weeks to get this code finished. And between the Monday and the following Friday, I am making snapshot, snapshot, snapshot. I am constantly adding code, make, fixing mistakes that I've made, writing tests, adding documentation. I'm doing all sorts of work. What I would like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to give this work that I'm doing to add this feature, I want to give that a name. And I want the name that I give it to be sort of loose in the sense that I don't want to say this particular snapshot is the one that represents my work. As my work evolves, every day that I add more to it, I want to be able to move that forward in time. So I need a, I need something more like a bookmark. So I want to, you know, if I was reading a book and on the first night I read 20 pages, I want to put my bookmark on page 20. And then the next night when I read, I, I land on page 53. I want to put my bookmark there. I don't care about the old page 20 anymore. I just want to keep track of where I am as I progress forward. So I need a, I need a name that can move as I do more work on this on this line of code. And that's exactly what we're going to do when we talk about uh, working with branches. Okay, so let me take you through and show you some things about branches. So on this repo here, if I say git branch, what it's going to do is it's going to list all of the branches that I have defined in this repository. And because I have reviewed students code for, <laughs> I have reviewed a lot of code, I have all kinds of branches on here. Lots of these branches I wrote, lots of these branches I didn't write. These are all different, you know, different versions of what I'm talking about. People writing features, people fixing bugs, and so on. So when you say git branch, or if you say git tag, what it does is it lists the tags or it lists the branches, okay? Git tag, git branch does a list. So right now I am, if you look at my log, you'll see that it says a number of things. It says my head is currently pointing to a branch called master. So what is a branch? A branch is a name, just like a tag is a name, and it refers to a particular commit. It refers to a commit. How do you make a branch? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this. So if I wanted to uh, do an experiment with you right now, I might say git branch experiment. The name that you give a branch is totally up to you. So one of the nice things about branches is that branches are local to your repository, which means if I have a branch called experiment, you can have a branch called experiment and they don't necessarily have to point to the same thing. 
It's a way for you to work on something so you can name your branches in ways that make sense to you. And you typically want to use something that would that would make sense to the work that you're doing. So later on, you're going to see me do a lot of this when I'm naming my branches. If I'm working on a GitHub project and let's say that I'm working on an issue, like let's say I'm working on this issue, issue 1129, what I would tend to do is I would tend to name my branch in such a way that I could correlate it with some work that I'm doing. So I am working on GitHub issue 1129 or I'm adding a new feature. So I'm going to say something like add feature X or something like that. It's a way for me to give myself enough information that I can remember, oh yeah, that's what I was doing when I was working on this thing. So let's say that I want to have an experiment branch. When I say git branch experiment, let's see what it does. So git log, I want you to notice what it shows here. It says, this is the commit that I'm currently on. That's where my head is. My head is pointing to the master branch. But there are other things that also point to this exact same commit, and one of them is called experiment. Okay, So right now, my head is pointing to the master branch, not the experiment branch. So let's change that. Let's. So we did git branch. We did git branch experiment to create the branch. That created the branch. Let's switch to that branch. Let's say git checkout experiment, and then let's look at our log again. So what it says now is you're sitting on this commit right here, and your head, the version that's checked out into your working tree and what's in the staging area, is pointing to whatever is on the experiment branch. Other branches also point here, in, including this thing called master, but the experiment branch is the one that we are currently sitting on as we do this. Okay, so this is, this is going to seem odd maybe. So I want you to imagine that you and I are both reading the same book. And when we start out, the first page that we both read is page one. But let's say you're a faster reader than I am. So you start reading and you get to page whatever, 27, and I only get to page 12 the first day that we read this book. And so we need two bookmarks because we're both going through, you know, we're working in the same book. However, we are at different positions. We're doing different things as we move through this. So you have a bookmark and I have a bookmark. And when I open the book to a particular bookmark, I'm doing two things. I'm opening to a page number. So imagine that a page number is like saying I'm opening to a particular spot in Git, a snapshot. But I'm going to open to that page using this bookmark or this bookmark. So if I start reading and I've opened to, to the experiment bookmark, if I read five pages, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that bookmark five pages forward so that it's going to follow me along. But I'm not going to move your bookmark. Your bookmark might be on the same page that I began at, but I'm not going to touch your bookmark when I do my work. So we said that a tag is a name that is associated with a commit and it will never move. Whereas a branch is a name which is associated with a particular commit and it will move as you make changes to this current snapshot. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to, uh, here's my files in the experiment branch. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to make a mess. So uh, let's say, for example, that I come along and in my experimental branch, I say to myself, what if I just deleted all of the tests? How do you delete things in Git? Git rm dash fr because I'm going to delete a, uh, a directory. Let's delete the test directory. OK, so how much are we deleting here? If I take a look at the test directory, you can see there's all kinds of files and folders in here. Let's just delete them all. Git rmfr tests, they're gone, okay? So let's take a look at the status of this repository. So right now, I have deleted all of these files from the staging area. So what I need to do is I need to create a snapshot that has all of these files removed. 
So it says these are, if you want to unstage these changes, so these changes have been staged, but they haven't been committed. So let's commit them. Git commit dash M, remove all the tests. Who needs them, right? We, it's, it turns out we do, but let's delete them anyway. So we make our commit. We delete all of these files, they're gone. So if I look in here, I have no test directory, no such file or directory. Let's look at our log. So what I want you to notice is that the commit that we've been talking about so far is still there. Here it is. This is F0606. This was uh, from Wednesday, September 23. And you'll also notice that the master branch is still sitting on that commit. So we haven't moved it. But there's a new commit up here, and it has a new SHA. It was created by me on Thursday, September the 24th. We removed all of the tests. And you'll notice that that is where my head is pointed, and that um, my experiment branch used to be here, but my experiment branch has moved forward. All right, let's make another change. Uh, it's always easier to delete than it is to create. So let's do some more delete. Let's delete the docs. Who needs, if we don't have tests, who needs docs, right? So let's remove, git remove the docs. All that hard work, gone. So let's commit. Um, let's say, how are we gonna say, uh, nobody, All right, so let's take a look at our log. Here's the commit that we originally had a minute ago. And our tag is still here, master is still here. But you'll notice that there's one, two commits that are sitting on top of that commit. And my experiment branch used to be here when we removed all the tests, but now my experiment branch has moved up Again, it's moved to another snapshot. So what's happening here with my branch is that when I'm sitting on a branch, I can work my way forward, right? I can commit, 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 and that branch is going to move forward with me as I go. Every time I make another commit, it's gonna go forward. I mean, if we're gonna delete the tests and we're gonna delete the docs, you know we have to delete the code, right? So let's do that. So let's remove all of the source files. Whoops, I want to do it with git uh, remove, sorry, git rm fr source. Okay, source files are gone. Here's all the files. They're, they're gone. They're ready to be ready to be removed. Git commit. Um, Think of all the bugs that we're deleting here, right? Like there's literally no more bugs because the code is all gone. So this is great. We delete all that code. Let's take a look at our log. We were here, that's where the master branch is. And we deleted the tests, we deleted the docs, we deleted the, uh, we deleted the source code. So nothing that we have done has affected the master branch, the original one that we were working on at all. All right, so let me prove that to you. So I'm gonna switch to, to the master branch. Right now, if I say git, uh, git status, see it, it tells me that I am currently sitting on the experiment branch. And I've got my terminal set up so it shows me which branch I'm on and I've also got my shell, um, my prompt so it tells me what branch I'm on. You may not have that set up. So you can always say git status and it'll say you're on the experiment branch. So let's let, let's take a look. So the experiment branch, um, do I still have some stuff in source? Oh, I have a front end directory that I didn't get rid of for some reason. Let's, um, that's no good. Let's remove source, sorry, I keep doing the wrong thing. I need to say git rm source source is gone get status 
Okay, so everything's gone actually. Just an empty directory. So we are sitting on the experiment branch. Let's switch to the master branch. I'm gonna say git checkout. Before I do, there's my files. Git checkout master. So it switched me to the master branch. I do an ls and what do you see? You see that all of the source files are there, all of the test files are there, all of the doc files are there. So the snapshot that we had before has those files in it. When you remove them from Git or when you add something to Git, it doesn't affect the old snapshots. Those, those snapshots are like you know fossils in amber. They're not gonna change. They are, for all time, they are locked into the way that they look looked when you created the snapshot. So if I do a log, you'll notice that at the top of my history, I have this commit, my head is pointing to master, and those other three commits, you can't see them. So they're gone, right? They're not gone, but they're gone, they're not gone from Git, they're gone from this line of development. So I want you to notice something. The master branch, currently at the at the tip of the master branch, the head of the master branch, the top of the master branch is this commit, and then this one goes before it, then this one, then this one, and if we go all the way down, somewhere way, way, way down at the bottom will be the initial commit. I think there's like 13, there's the initial commit, all the way back uh, Sunday, October 27th, 2019, that's the initial commit. So when I talk about the master branch, I mean two things, I mean, the master branch refers to this snapshot, but it also refers to this line of development, like that history that goes back through the project, okay? They, we talk about both things because they're both related. Now, if I switch git checkout experiment, now I'm on the experiment branch. Now if I do my log, you can see that there are one, two, three extra commits that are on top of this. And the experiment branch includes everything in the master branch, but it also includes this, this deviation. We went off and we did three new things. We, we made some other commits. However, we share a lot of the same history. So with Git, you are often, um, you're often going to have branches that, like just like a tree, it all starts out the same and then it goes this way and this way and you're gonna have all these different experiments that go on. Now I've been calling this an experiment and let's say that it's exactly that. Like I get to the point where I did this work and I realize, you know what, um, Maybe I do need some of that code. Like maybe maybe it was a bad idea that I deleted all the all the docs and all the tests and maybe maybe this is maybe this whole experiment was a bad idea. So what I can do is I can go back to the master branch and um, I I can just leave the experimental branch there. Like I don't ever have to do anything with it ever again, but I can leave it in Git in case I ever want to go back and look at it for some reason, it's still gonna be in there. If you wanna delete a branch though, you could say git checkout dash D and then the name of the branch. Git check, sorry, that's not what I want. Git branch dash D, let me switch, let me get this. Git, um, Checkout master git branch dash d experiment like this. Okay, now when I type when I type this, uh, when I say git branch dash d experiment, it says to me, okay, hold on. Before you delete this branch, if you delete this branch, you're not going to be able to reach all of these commits. So let's think about what I'm about to do. So I'm on the experiment branch here. I'm sit my head is sitting on this commit. If I delete this name, this bookmark, this branch, if I delete it, then this commit, this commit, and this commit will still be in Git, but they won't have a name that I can reach them from. 
I would have to know about this commit right here um, before, before I could do anything about it. Now, this commit has a whole bunch of names on it. Like for example, the master branch is sitting on this commit. And so all of the commits underneath this are reachable from master because they're all connected. But if I delete, if I delete the branch name up here, I'm gonna lose access to all of those. And so it's warning me, it says, it says, cannot delete it. Oh, because I'm sitting on it. Git checkout master git branch dash d experiment. So it, I try to delete it and it says, I, are, are you sure you wanna do this? If you're really sure you wanna do it, then you have to say it louder. <laughs> so Git's way of saying, I really mean it, I really wanna do it, is to put a capital letter in here. So if I say git branch, before I do this, let me just show it, let me just copy, um, let me copy the git shaw so we don't lose track of it so I can show you something. I'm gonna go back to my experiment branch. I'm gonna copy this commit right here so that I have it. I'm gonna check out my master branch like so, and then I'm going to git uh, branch dash capital D experiment. And now it has deleted that branch. And I'm sitting on the master branch, git log, those commits that I had a minute ago, those three commits are gone. Now, I told you that you can do this. You can check out a raw git commit or like a, a SHA like this. If I do this, I want, I want to come back to this message. So it says, no, we're switching you to this commit. But it says you are in what's called a detached head state. You can look around, you can make changes and commit them, and you can discard any commits you make in this state without impacting any branches by switching back to a branch. But it's saying there's a problem with what you're doing, and the problem is that you aren't currently on a branch. So it's like opening to a random page in a book, reading something, closing the book, and then saying, okay, I want to keep reading where I was a minute ago. And you're like, I don't know where I was. Like, it's still in there. The page that I want is there, but I can't, I don't have a way to get back to it. I need a bookmark that's in there. So if I look at this code, notice what's what's happened here. My head is sitting on this commit. So all of these commits are still here. Even though I deleted the branch, the experiment branch, I still have access to all of these commits, but I just don't have an easy way to find them again. So when we're working with Git, you always want to be working on a branch. So this is really important. Whenever you're going to do any work, you want to be sitting on a branch in order to in order to, in order to do your work. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, how would I solve this problem? How could I get on a branch right now? Right now it says I'm sitting on this I'm sitting on this commit. How could I make a branch? Well, we already know how to make a branch. We could say git branch. Uh, let's just make experiment two. Let's call it experiment two. And I'm gonna switch to that branch, git checkout experiment two. So now I'm sitting on I'm sitting on this commit and my branch name is experiment two. So if I do any work, if I make any changes, add files, delete files, modify files, it's gonna put it on this line, which extends off. I have like it's like putting a bookmark in here, I have a name for it. So, so far when we've wanted to make a branch, we've said git branch, and then we have put in a name here like this. But you're not gonna see me write that very often. Typically what you're gonna see me write is git checkout dash b and then a name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine creating the branch and checking out the branch all into one, all into one command. So let's make another branch and we'll call this experiment three. Um, sorry, experiment three. So it says switched to a new branch, experiment three, and I'm sitting on experiment three. So I say git log. So notice what's happened here. My original commit was back here. This is where master still is. Three new commits up here. And you can see there's two branches that point to this same commit, 
But the one that I'm currently on is experiment three. So if I do any work, experiment three is gonna go off and it's going to do it in that way. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I, I'm on experiment three, so I have all these uh, files here. Let's make a change to the readme. So I'm just gonna go into the readme and up at the top, I'm gonna say experiment three. Just so we can tell, this was the experiment three branch. I'm gonna save this. And Git says, you've got changes to the readme file. Do you wanna work with these? And I'm gonna say yes. So I'm gonna add the readme file. I'm gonna commit uh, updating I'm gonna commit and okay, so let's look at the log. So now what you can see is that my original was down here. That's where master still is. We did three changes and that's where experiment two is currently sitting. But then I updated the readme on the experiment three branch and it has created a new commit over here like this. All right, well, let's do the same thing on experiment two. So I wanna jump over to experiment two from experiment three. So I'm gonna check out, do I have to say dash B? No, I don't say dash B unless I want to create the branch, but if a branch already exists, then I don't do it. Now watch what would happen. If I said experiment two, if I said dash B, it'll give me an error. It says there's already a branch named experiment two. So it won't do, it won't break anything, but that when you're trying to remember, do I need dash B or not? There's the answer. So let's switch to experiment two and let's modify, let's modify the readme and say experiment two. Uh, the readme has been updated, so we add the readme. We make a commit updating the readme. Okay, so what just happened? So we've got, we, somehow we've lost experiment three. Does that make sense to you? So think about this, I'm on experiment two. Experiment two has all of these three previous commits that I made and the mainline branch. So what's happened is we had our main branch. We went, we, we made three commits, one, two, three, and then we, we went off here for experiment two and we went off here for experiment three. We've deviated, the two of them are gone. So you can't see experiment three from this line of code. What would happen if I, so let me just prove this to you. Um, here's the top of the readme file, experiment two, okay? Let's switch to experiment three, git checkout experiment three and let's look at the log. So if I look at the log now, I can see experiment three, but I can't see experiment two. So I've got these two parallel worlds, experiment two and experiment three that are both happening at the same time. They both have gone in slightly different directions off of this main line of code here. So these three commits are the same, but each of these have made two different commits. So if I look at the readme on experiment three, you can see that that code is different again. So one of the things that Git makes really easy for us is to create parallel versions of our code where we take the way that the, the project look, the snapshot of all the files, and we go in this direction and we try you know, using this algorithm or using this dependency, or we try writing our code this way. And then we do another experiment and we say, what if we did it this way? So we have multiple different versions that we're working on, and it's really easy to switch back and forth between all of these different versions. So this workflow where you are working with, um, when you're working with branches, is how you're gonna wanna do your work. All of your work is gonna be done on a branch and you're, you're going to work off of the main branch. Now the main branch might be called, might be called master, okay? or it might be called main, or it might be called trunk. I told you before that uh, Git repositories are right now, a lot of them are migrating away from the master terminology. So you'll see different names for the main branch. So you, 
you're not going to do your work on the main branch. I'm going to talk about this in a subsequent lecture when we get into merging and rebasing and so on. But for now, what I want you to learn is every time you're going to start doing some work, your workflow is going to look like this. You're going to go to your master branch and you're going to create a new branch for your work. So you're working on a project. You're going to try and fix bug number 1129. So you're going to go and you're going to check out your master branch. And you're going to say git checkout dash b, because I want to create this branch, git checkout dash b issue 112, is that what it was? 1129? Yeah, issue 1129. And initially, when you check it out, it's going to it's going to be pointing to the exact same place that your master branch was. You're going to be pointing to the exact same commit that the master branch was pointing at here, okay? How do I delete that branch? git checkout dash d issue. Let me switch back to the master branch first. git checkout master git branch dash d issue 1129. Now I wanna show you another error you may run into. So if you're on the master branch and you're in the middle of editing some files. So for example, if I said, um, Let's say, I'm, again, I'll just modify the readme file. So I'll put in some blank lines. So right now, there are changes to the readme file that haven't been staged. So um, whenever you're going to switch, switch branches, Git is going to make sure that switching the branch won't cause a problem with what's in the readme. So let me show you an example. If I said git checkout, um, experiment two, it says, I can't do it. There's a problem. So Git, Git tries to check out experiment two, but experiment two has modified the readme file. And I have also modified the same lines in the readme file. So Git says, if I check out experiment two, it's going to destroy all of the work that you currently have in your working tree that needs to be needs to be staged. So it won't let me do it. So if you ever run into this, notice what it says. It says, please commit your changes before you switch branches. So what it wants you to do is it wants you to put these changes onto your current branch and then switch to another branch. So switching between branches, you need to have a clean working directory or you have to be OK with those changes going forward. So let me show you what I mean. So git status, I have changes to the readme file. Um, I've added a couple of blank lines to the readme file. So if I were to say git checkout dash b, because I want to create it, issue 1129, what would that do? Okay, that worked. Why did it work? It worked because Git has said, I am, I'm going to allow you to make a new branch, but there's nothing on this new branch yet. And so it's not going to affect anything that you have in your working tree. I'm not going to have to delete things. So I'm just going to carry forward the changes that you have in your working directory right now, but I'm going to switch you over to this branch so you can do your work on this branch. So when I commit, if I made a commit right now onto this, so let's do that, git add readme, Git status, the readme is staged, git commit dash m, updating readme. My changes have gone on the issue 1129 branch, which has branched off of this other one here. So at this point, we've made like three or four or five different branches that all go off of this one branch, and that's totally, totally normal in Git. In Git, Every time you do any, any work, you make changes, you're going you're gonna to go off this way and off this way. And what that's going to allow us to do, it's going to allow us to have many, many people working on the same piece of code without stepping on each other. So you can make changes in one direction, I can make changes in another direction, and it won't affect any of the things that, any of the work that you're doing. Okay? So in the next video, what I want to do is I want to, instead of giving you the theory here, I want to take you through and show you how I would use these to actually fix a bug. Like what would the whole the whole process look like when you're when you're going to be fixing a bug? But I want you to get comfortable with working with branches, creating them, 
switching between them, understanding what a branch is versus what a commit is, understanding where your code goes when you uh, when you make a commit, so that you'll be able to um, you'll be able to jump around between different different pieces of work that you're doing.